You're looking live at the White House. The president moments away from uh, hopping across the street to the Eisenhower Executive Office building where he's going to outline his remarks on how we go about countering violent extremism. We do not expect him to utter the words radical Islam. Democratic Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard says that would be a big mistake. She is here. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cubito. Ahead of the president's speech, reports today that ISIS is planning to use Libya as the gateway to Europe and throughout the Mediterranean. Meanwhile, we're hearing that France is tracking 400 people believed to belong to possible sleeper cells. Congresswoman Tulsa Gabbard of Hawaii, a wonderful state, says it's time to deal with this not-so-wonderful threat. She has no problem using the words radical Islam. Congresswoman, good to have you back. There is this ongoing reluctance, Congresswoman, on the part of the administration to, to say those words. Is it such a big deal? They seem to be saying it's not. Aloha, Neil. Uh, it is a big deal, and here's why. Unless you accurately identify who your enemy is, then you can't come up with an effective strategy, a winning strategy, to defeat that enemy. My concern here with the summit that's happening right now in Washington is that it really is a diversion from what our real focus needs to be. And that focus is on this Islamic extremist threat that is posed not only to the United States and the American people, but around the world. Uh, from what we've heard so far, the administration is really claiming that the motivation or the, uh, the, the thing that's fueling this terrorism around the world is something that has to do with poverty has to do with a lack of jobs or a lack of access to education, really a materialistic motivation, and therefore they are proposing that the solution must be to alleviate poverty around the world, to continue this failed Bush and Obama policy of nation building. Uh, the danger here is, again, that you're not identifying the threat and you're not identifying the fact that they are not fueled by a materialistic motivation. It's actually a theological, this radical Islamic ideology that is allowing them to continue to recruit, that is allowing them to continue to grow uh, in strength, and really that's fueling these horrific terroristic activities around the world. Well, there must be something what you say, because just looking back, Congresswoman, at the 9-11 hijackers, uh, 13 of the 19 came from millionaire Saudi families. So it wasn't as if cash was a big issue or money was a big driving force, far from it. But be that as it may, I'm just wondering whether we get caught up in this battle. The administration has to stick to its guns and not make a big deal over words, even dragging uh, this fine network into it. This is from the Attorney General yesterday, Congresswoman. We spend more time, more time, talking about what do you call it, as opposed to what do you do about it, you know? I mean, really, you know, you know, if Fox didn't talk about this, they'd have nothing else to talk about. Now, just so you know, Congresswoman, I took no personal affront to that. I'm a very thick-skinned guy. But having said that, again, remind me of why it is important to use those words. I mean, you, you've been in battle. You're a veteran. You, you, it, what, what difference would it make, not to play off Hillary Clinton's line, if you called them... If you called them that, you'd still be gunning for them. The administration is still arguing we are still gunning for them. So what's the difference? Uh, the difference is how you define our enemy is directly linked to the strategy that you come up with in how you defeat them, in what you're doing about it. Uh, and this is why it's so critical and so important. And I'll look back to my own experiences. Like so many Americans after 9-11, uh, I raised my hand and I enlisted because of this call to action from our leaders at that time saying, we will go to war and we will seek out and defeat these Islamic extremists who attacked and killed so many Americans on 9-11 uh, and kill them. Uh, just a few short years later, though, we were diverted from that and we ended up in a nation-building mission uh, in Iraq, deposing Saddam Hussein, uh, pushing forward this Western ideal of democracy in Iraq, costing trillions of dollars and thousands of American lives, uh, and to what end? So this is the point of why we must learn from the lessons of the past in order to make sure that we don't go through this same thing again. And these two things are directly linked. We must identify the enemy in order to figure Figure out what is the effective strategy to defeat them. Um, well, I have you, Congressman. You don't mind me pushing the time a little bit here. Uh, Iran's uh, one of their uh, supreme mullahs uh, is saying that the movie American Sniper, which has been, you know, uh, smuggled into Iran, a lot of people have seen it, uh, is a blasphemy, and that it is uh, uh, an anti-Islamic movie and makes Muslims targets. Uh, that is no good, and uh, is now raising the specter of, of, of severe punishment for those who do. 
What do you think of that? Uh, well, you know, if, if you watch the movie, I think there, there are a lot of things in there that have to do very directly with the experience of a soldier uh, who volunteered to serve his country, who deployed, the challenges that he faced, the challenges that his family faced. Uh, but if you look at this statement coming out of Iran, again, uh, each of these different things that we hear have to do with the same uh, common theme, which is it is about their radical Islamic ideology, uh, which is fueling, whether it's their statements or their actions or these attacks by ISIS or each of these things around the world. And that's where we've got to really look at that and understand it, define it, identify it, and then understand how we must defeat it. And one of the main things that we have to do in order to address this growing threat of ISIS, why they have foreign fighters coming, as you mentioned, from well-off families, from democratic societies, is letting them know loud and clear there are two Two things that will happen if you join this fight with Islamic uh, radical extremists. Number one, you will be killed. Uh, number two, uh, after you're killed, you're not going to heaven. There's th this promise of going to heaven and uh, enjoying all of you know the things that they're promising is is not a fact. You will go to hell. There's not uh, defeating that ideology is really my point. And it's a very good point, Congresswoman. Thank you very very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Neil. Well